think it's only natural that we as audiophiles, we are always on the lookout for the next wonder box. The box that we can install into our hi-fi systems that will open the heavens and allow audio glory to you know, shine down upon us. But let's be real about it, how often does that ever happen? I think hi-fi is about putting together boxes or really curating hi-fi components to give us a sound that we enjoy, that we love. And I think vinyl playback epitomizes that whole process because it really is a jigsaw puzzle of different bits and pieces that all have to work together to give us the great sound that we desire. But I think with vinyl, the desire for a wonder box could be even stronger than with digital. And maybe, just maybe, I have one of those boxes here now. And about six months ago, I decided I want to supercharge my new to vinyl playback journey and jump up with the gear that I'm using from fairly entry level to fairly high end so that I could experience really good vinyl sound consistently. And I thought my vinyl epiphany moment was going to happen last year. Those of you who watched my last vinyl video will know that definitely wasn't the case for me at all. By going up in gear quality, mostly to a very high-end moving coil cartridge in the Luxman LMC5, it opened up a Pandora's box of vinyl playback issues I was not prepared for because I had not been there before, so didn't really know what to expect. So really, it's quite a leap for me in a very short period of time to go from saying that my vinyl setup wasn't really clicking to my vinyl setup is absolutely killing it and it's actually rivaling my digital, very high-end digital setup in some ways now. That's a really big change. So what have I done and what have I changed? Well, I haven't really changed too much. I've made a couple of big changes and a couple of small changes, but really all of them are important. I was a very good boy last year, I worked really very hard, and I bought myself a nice Christmas present, a Degritter Mark II ultrasonic record cleaning machine. And I bought the unit from Audio Emotion, a UK hi-fi dealer. They gave me a very good deal, but I bought the unit with my own hard-earned money. And at £2,500, this is an expensive record cleaner. And that's before you even realise that you need an endless supply of distilled water, which is also not cheap. And you might expect perfect record cleaning or a perfectly behaved machine for £2,500. And I definitely don't think that's what the degritter is. However, I don't regret buying it for a single second. It's definitely made me approach record cleaning differently, think about it differently. I much prefer, much more enjoy using it compared to what I was doing before. And I definitely will make a review video for it in the near future, but I haven't had enough time yet. I'm really still learning how best to use it, but it's definitely been a step in the right direction. I think I'm getting better sound now in quite a few key areas from record playback. So that was definitely a big step forward and step in the right direction. The other big change I made to the system was adding this. This is the Autophon ST80SE, which is a moving coil step up transformer because after my last video, a number of the comments and some research after, I realized something. One of the benefits of using a low output, high end moving coil cartridge is that there are less windings on the coil. So less winding on the windings on the coil means that there's less mass within the movement of the cartridge mechanism, which means in theory it should be able to move faster to track the really tiny micro, really is micro details that are in our record grooves. And it makes sense that in theory anyway, more mass within a mechanism might slow that down and make that whole tracking process less efficient. The downside of this is that the voltage that the circuit then creates is very small. So you need a crazy amount of amplification to raise that signal level up. And you can do that in several ways. But obviously then this whole process, this whole amplification gain process is extremely important because even the tiniest little error at the start of that, by the time that's amplified, this exponential amount is going to be much bigger come the end, the end result that we hear. So like paying attention to this, get the signal from the cartridge or from the record and amplify that. All of that process, all of that chain is really critically important. And this was fantastically well explained to me last year when I visited Origin Live, the high-end turntable manufacturer. And what's interesting to me now is I'm really starting to understand more what was explained to me there. 
But back to our situation here, I think in modern hi-fi times, it becomes part of the phono stage's job to add the gain that we need for our moving coil cartridge. But it's really not that simple. The phono stage I have been using is the YBA PH1, and it has a fixed 50 decibels of gain, which is fairly low and definitely won't be ideal for every cartridge to sound its best. I now know this. And what's very important about this situation I now know is that this situation is probably more common than I first realized and first thought about because I think any audiophile that's using an integrated amplifier with a built-in phono stage, a lot of the ones that I've looked at at least have had fixed gains for those phono stages. So that means maybe that gain isn't perfect or isn't the best way to get the best sound from a very high end or very capable, very good moving coil cartridge. And I was always thinking about gain as being perfectly or perfectly correlated to volume. So in my example, if I added 20 decibels worth of gain, so the YBA has 50, if I added 20 decibels of gain to that to make it 70 decibels, surely the volume level that I listen at from the amplifier would need to be reduced by the same percentage to give me the same perceived sound. That is how you would think about it logically, but the sonic picture, the actual sound that you hear isn't exactly like that, and that's the most interesting and best bit about it. I don't exactly know how they work, but I'm pretty sure inside this autophon is two transformers, one for each channel, wound in a certain way that when the signal from the cartridge passes through them, it's amplified by the amounts based on the windings of the transformer. And it's 26 decibels of gain in the case of this autophon. And I actually think it's very clever because this is a passive device. You know, we don't we don't plug it in. There's nowhere to you know, plug it in. It doesn't take power. It increases the volume. It amplifies the signal passively. Really very clever. It's probably really simple. The best engineering yeah, principles are simple, aren't they? So to me, that's really clever. But it also means, I think, that well, it stands to reason that how this is built, the windings, the transformers, you know, however this is built, of course, is going to be really important. And I'm sure that is part partly why it dictates the price. So this is quite expensive, I think. It comes in at around 1,500 pounds. So that's almost as much as the Luxman cartridge costs. And that creates the quandary for the audio file. Should you just upgrade your phono stage to one that has a higher gain, or should you use a step-up transformer instead, or maybe should you do both? I did some research on this to try and find out what would be the advantage of using a step-up transformer, and it seems like it's how it creates its distortion. Interesting, isn't it, to think about that. By all accounts, every amplifier that you would use will create some distortion, stands to reason, doesn't it? And a step-up transformer, by all accounts, its distortion or the, the distortion that it creates ends up in a sonic or audible region that we are not very sensitive to, more in the bass region. Whereas maybe an active amplifier, you know, like one that you might create, an active circuit that you might create, could create distortion that's more in the audible range, in maybe the vocal range as an example. So the principle or the theory of using a step-up transformer, I was very sold on straight away. However, the situation is a little more complex because what concerns me the most is that step-up transformers are designed to be used with moving magnet phono stage inputs rather than moving coil, which is all fine and maybe it's even a good thing. However, my experience so far has been that vinyl has always sounded better when I've used a moving coil input of the phono stage and that's especially true with the YBA that I have here now. However, the YBA has the ability to accept high output signals on its moving coil input. And that really encouraged me to want to try a step-up transformer, in particular the ST80SE being Autophon, you know, that legendary manufacturer, being their best step-up transformer offering. You know, I had nothing to lose but everything to gain. <laughs> Excuse the pun. So what differences did I notice? Well, I was generally listening at about the same volume as before, which was a surprise, maybe a bit lower, but not massively lower. 
I did notice straight away what seemed like a lower noise floor, which made the sound clearer and more well focused, which I liked. But that was already where the system was sounding very good, but better is still better. Once things properly warmed up, the bigger sonic differences became clearer to me. Literally everything sounded more impressive and more pleasing. There was more warmth and fullness and body to the sound that I was expecting from the Luxman LMC5 given its reviews, but I wasn't really getting that sound from it before. Vocals sounded more full and more pleasing and definitely more special in terms of their character. Bass had more oomph and more control and when it's there in the music, it had more punch too. But the big improvement for me came with the treble. The treble clarity became more clear and more present and more easy to hear. Really nice, you know, cymbal details, high frequency details that was clearer, but not only was it clearer, it had like a nice glossy sheen to it as well. So it gave treble, cymbal, and you know, other high frequency information, just this extra bit of special character, which made it sound more real to me, more organic to me. And just that, to me, it's just more pleasing. I, you know, I care more about pleasing than, than real authenticity because it's hard to know, isn't it, how something sounds original so how you know how did I feel about listening to it and the treble was now really very special and I feel like I was starting to hear the benefits of a Shibata stylus profile in how that's supposed to give you you know better tracking of higher frequencies so this was really really impressive and yeah I've really <laughs> really been impressed by the treble from this setup now it's been absolutely killer and also I was really enjoying the overall flow and vibe of the music from all of my records even the rougher sounding ones all the music was very engagingly smooth, with a move your body to it, lovely vibe. And I think that is one of the big positive traits of the Bergman air bearing turntable design. But it was mixed with a good amount of energy and liveliness and get out of the speaker's sound, but with a quiet background. So the soundstage could form very clearly and nicely in a three-dimensional fashion with really nice subtlety. And I think those are all of the traits that I really like about the YBA Phono stage used from its moving coil input. It, it balances a really lively sound, but with a nice amount of clarity and not too edgy, not too edgy sound. But I know I was using the step up transformer in a non-conventional way, plugging it into the moving coil input. So of course I plugged it into the moving magnet input too. And this was really interesting because the same sound characteristics were still present, just a little bit more dynamically toned down. So a bit softer, a bit less lively, but a bit more sure-footed and planted, but less exciting and uplifting. And I think this is probably more of a traditional vinyl sound maybe, or maybe one that you would assume is vinyl, you know, a bit more relaxed, a bit more calm, a bit more, you know, just relaxing and easy going. And one of the benefits of this was that I was definitely now hearing less vinyl noise coming through the system and definitely less of the, you know, less desirable sounds that we can get when playing vinyl. However, I think... I still preferred the sound, funny enough, through the moving coil input, just because it's a bit more lively and a bit more uplifting. But it was interesting to listen to the two, and it's like, you know, one wasn't categorically miles better than the other. I think it's more of a preference thing. But the big test was, of course, then to take the autophon out of the system. And straight away, I missed it. The sound was not totally different, of course, but the special characters of the music were gone, and it was back to being more subdued, less impressive, less warm, less bold, less special. And that is where the title of this video came from. For me, you know, the Autophon ST80 SE, a real mouthful. It really does seem to supercharge the sound of vinyl, not in a, in a, you know, a crazy type of way. It just uplifts the performance. I think more from just listening to music to actually listening to you know a music event, musicians playing in the room. It's the oldest, oldest cliche in the book, but it is quite a nice way to describe it. Everything is more elevated, more rounded, more dimensional, more engaging, more fun, more pleasing, more authentic, and just better in every way. But I also wanted to test this further. And I have here at the moment the superb Musical Fidelity A1 integrated amplifier, which has a built-in moving magnet and moving coil phono stage with 40 decibels of gain for the moving magnet stage and 60 decibels of gain for the moving coil. Both are fixed and they seem like pretty common, very good, reasonable numbers. 
Listening to my turntable fed straight into the A1's phono stage using the moving coil input, it sounded impressive actually, and it's a really nice overall balanced sound of the phono stage on the turntable playing through the amplifier. Although it was a little gritty for me, it definitely wasn't as smooth or as refined as what I'd been listening to before from the YBA, but overall it was still a very enjoyable listen. Then I switched to the moving magnet input using the Autophon Step Up Transformer as well, and that magic special character to the music was back. It sounded bigger, warmer, bolder, more rounded, more impressive, more like listening to musicians, as I mentioned before, rather than just music, because the presentation quality was just elevated. However, the more subdued, more kind of sat down, sat back, more relaxed, easygoing sound of a moving magnet input was there. So the whole thing and all of the consistencies I was hearing, you know, by adding the, the autophon, the step up transformer, taking it out of the system, listening to it on the moving coil input, listening to it on the moving magnet input, obviously of you know several different setups and amplifiers and stuff. It just it just kind of hit home to me. Lots of things here. So I can definitely take away from this that the step up transformer is a fantastic thing to use. It adds so much character to the music but not in a bad way it's not like adding its own sound too much really i don't think it's just adding more more impressive pleasingness to the sound that's the only way i could probably describe it and it adds that same character i think regardless of what phono stage you're going to use obviously to some degree i haven't tested all of them but at the same time i could still hear the sound of the phono stage that other part of the puzzle so that is really important and unfortunately it means I can't answer you know anything conclusively here I can say definitely that the step up transformer in particular obviously this autophon it is fantastic I wouldn't want to listen to my system now if it never changed without it it adds that much better sound for me personally but I couldn't say categorically whether buying a step up transformer is actually a better purchase than buying an upgraded or a different or a better phono stage I've got a funny feeling to a certain price point it probably is because I'm looking at you know, different options that are available for phono stages very high-end ones include really good step up transformers as part of that design like the benefit of what they do is already incorporated into those designs but those are really really expensive and in the real world I feel like if you have a, an integrated amplifier with a phono stage built in that you like the sound of well then you can definitely add some extra special character you could supercharge the sound of your vinyl by adding you know a step up transformer you know in particular this ST80 that I've tried here and even with the YBA phono stage that I have here I still preferred it. I still much preferred the sound of it with the system. That was to me was the press the, my preference here. Moving coil input, autophon, step up transformer in into whatever setup here. That was still my preferred and best sound. So <laughs> I suppose it comes right back to the beginning of this video, like the jigsaw puzzle that we're trying to put together. I, I don't I don't think it really matters. I think what matters more is just how you piece that puzzle together. There's no right answer here conclusively for everybody, but probably no wrong one either. There probably is some wrong ones, but you know, I don't feel like there's a wrong answer in what I've kind of discovered here. I really like the benefit of the step up transformer. That needs exploring more. Obviously, I've got other things that I need to explore as part of this vinyl journey. So it's not the end, but benefits of are definitely 100% clear to me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope there's something in it that you'll find useful and helpful depending on where you are in your vinyl journey. If you think I've missed anything, please let me know in the comment section. I'm sure I have. If I got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section. I'm sure you will. I'll see you all again. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos. Thumbs up as well.